take all of those workers? Here, welcome. Kim Elkins, <coughs> Please make your right here. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the evidence you're about to give in the hearing of this cause will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Please have a seat. Give the jury your name, please, ma'am. My name is Kimberly Elkins. Who do you work for? I work for Knoxville TVA and Police Credit Union. In what capacity? What are you doing? I am the uh, manager of the internal audit department. Are you, for purposes of this case, are you the keeper of certain bank records uh, for Knoxville TVA and Police Credit Union? Yes, I was um, custodian of records for 12 years with the credit union. And back in 2007, were you so employed as well? Yes. And have you uh, brought today uh, records uh, from an account to the name of Hugh Christopher Newsom? Yes, I did. And if I can approach what's been marked as exhibit 129. You've handed these to us this morning. Can you recognize those and tell us what they are? Yes, those is the, the bank statements of the account and also the membership agreement is attached to the back. Is it a checking account, savings account, or? It is both, checking both. and savings. Is, is there an ATM withdrawal option with this account? Yes, there was. And can you tell us from examining these records when the last transaction on this account occurred? Yes, if you look at this statement with our ATM transactions, you can do a transaction and it doesn't hit your account right then. So what I've attached to the back of this is our actual report from the card system that shows exact the time that the card was put in the machine. Okay, and what so, time would, would that have been on what day? That was done um, on January the 6th, 2007 at 847. And what type of transaction was that at that time? That was a cash withdrawal for $100. And after that cash withdrawal, was there money left in the account? Yes, there was. After that withdrawal, there was a total of $961.81 available. Was there any more activity on that account after that transaction? Mm, as not, far as no. withdrawals or deposits? No, that was it. We'd move to Exhibit 129. Thank you. solemnly swear or affirm the evidence you're about to give in the hearing of this cause will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please have a seat. Back in 2007, uh, did you know Shannon Christian? I did. And Christopher Newsom as well? Mm -hmm. How did you know them? Um, Shannon was my best friend and Chris was her boyfriend at the time. How long had you known Shannon back in January 2007? Uh, 14 years. Did you go to school together? Now back in, in January 2007, where were you living? Um, the Washington Ridge Apartments, South Washington Pike. And that's here in Knoxville, Knoxville? Yes. How long have you lived here? Um, not long. I think uh, my roommate, I moved in in May of that year. 2007. 
six. Yes. Okay, did you have a roommate? I did. Kristen Powers. Kristen Powers. Mm -hmm. Now, in January of, of 2007, the January 6th, around that day, was there an occasion that you and Shannon had planned to attend? Yes. Um, it was Jamie Hampton's birthday. Um, it was actually a few days before that, but it was during the week, so um, they had planned a party for that weekend. Tell us about that day, that Saturday, January 6th. I was at home most of the day. Um, Shannon had to work. I believe she got there at 12.30 and was scheduled to work till 9.30. Um, she called me and said that she was um, able to leave early and she was going to go ahead and come to my apartment. Um, and so I asked her if she'd stop and get me some shampoo because I was out. So um, she came probably around 5.30 is when she got there. So at, at, earlier today, the plan was to go to the party. Was there a certain time y'all had planned to go or not? I was going to wait for her to get off work. Um, and she was going to come to my house and we were going to ride together. Um, but when she called and said she was getting off early, I just told her to go ahead and come because she had her back in the car with her. So the original plan would have been to go around 9 or 9.30 something she like that? She would not have been able to leave the store till 9.30. Okay. Um, when you're a key holder at the store, you have to close for 30 minutes before you're allowed to leave. Um, so she wouldn't have been probably to my apartment until 10-ish. How long had she been working there? A long time. Okay. Yeah. And were, did you and she both go to school at, at that time? Or? Yes, we both were attending UT. Had the same class schedule. And I have to ask you, how old were you back in January of 2007? How old was she? Um, we were both 21. Now, so Kara. Or, uh, Shannon called to let you know that she got off work early. Is that, yes. is that correct? And this party, where, what part of town was the party supposed to be? It was in Halls um, off uh, Cunningham. From Washington Ridge Apartments, about how long a drive was it? Ten minutes, depending on traffic, what time of day it was. So, when did, when did you see uh, Shannon that? Um, I went to go get my car and when I came back she was already there and she was sitting up under the, um, there were stairs that went up to my front porch and she was sitting up under the um, awning on top of the staircase. If I could show a picture to you on the monitor and up on the wall, what does that show us exhibit three? That's the stairs leading up to my stairs to my apartment where the first one right there on the corner. First on the corner? Yes. And just so we make a clean record, are the is that uh, photograph number three the same picture we're looking at on the wall? Yes. And tell us what we're looking at there. That's at the bottom of my my old apartment staircase, and then those are the stairs leading to the apartment. And does that also From show the, the parking lot? Yes. And exhibit five. Um, that is Shannon's forerunner. Is that the vehicle that uh, she owned at that time? Yes. So tell us about uh, Shannon getting back to Washington Bridge. Um, when I got there, she was already there, and I asked her if she. Um, <coughs> would ride with me to Target real quick to return a TV stand. Um, we jumped in the car, went to Target, it was like five minutes away, returned it and came back and I um, got in the shower. Okay. And what did she She was playing online poker on her computer. And uh, what's the next thing that happened? Um, I, once I got out of the shower, I heard her on the phone. Um, the door to my bathroom and my bedroom both fled into the living room area and um, she sounded agitated so um, I came out and asked her what was wrong she said that 
um, Chris was going to come pick her up and make her go get something to eat. Um, and she wasn't hungry because she'd been sick. So um, she said that she'd rather just go with me when we went. He could meet her there, but he um, said, no, you need to eat something because you haven't eaten in days. You know about what time? <coughs> After seven, probably. What's next? Um, I finished getting ready. She got dressed. Um, and around eight, she said, just to go ahead and go. And she would wait for him. And did you leave at that point? I did. When you left, was her forerunner in the parking lot? Yes. So tell us what you did then. The next contact you might have had with Shannon? Um, she walked outside with me to my car. Um, I said, I'll see you in a few minutes. And I left. And she went back up the stairs. Do you know what uh, she was wearing or planning to wear for this party? She had on jeans and a um, navy and white and hot pink striped sweater and hot pink shoes to match. Did she have on another shirt or something? She had a it was a tank top. Um, it's got like a built-in shelf bra. Um, it's a camisole that you wear under something that's thin or see-through. So that was about eight o'clock, you say, that you left? Yeah, I just happened to look at the clock above the TV, okay. and it was <coughs> just a few minutes after eight. And what was your understanding about how Shan then was going to get to the party? Um, I understood that he was on his way then. I mean, she seemed to think that that was the case. And so she said, I'll, we'll be right behind you um, after we get something to eat. And so. so tell us about uh, getting to the party and what happened over there. Um, I go straight there. Um, there's people there already. Um, some other people start to show up. Um, and then I was sitting in the living room. There's a large bay window that you can see the street. Um, and I saw Chris Ferris's truck pull in, and then Chris Newsom right behind him. They had identical trucks, same color, except Chris Ferris's was two door and Chris Newsom's was four door. Um, they pulled in right behind each other. Um, I hear people come in. I leaned over. There was this part of the staircase that led downstairs, and I could hear Josh. And I said, "Where's Chris and Shannon?" And he said, "Oh, he's just now on his way to get her." Did you see Chris there pull up? I saw his truck pull in. And about what time was that? It was right after nine. Right after nine. What did you do then when you saw I Chris called her. And what did you tell her? Um, I said he just left here. He dropped Josh off and he's on his way to get you now. She was not happy. I was going to ask you that. How did she sound? She was crying because um, she'd been sitting there for an hour by herself and she could have just ridden with me um, and then he could have picked her up there. What happened then? Um, I said he'll be there in a few minutes. Um, we got off the phone and it was probably an hour and a half later we realized that they still weren't there so we, I called her um, and she didn't answer. I sent her a text and was like, Hey, where are you? Um, no response. Uh, some of the guys started to call Chris and he wasn't answering either. So a little after nine, would be the last time then that you talked with her actually on the phone? Yes. And how many times did you try to call after that? Several. That night? Um, it was unusual for her not to answer or to call me right back. Um, I sent her several texts. Um, got no response. Um, Chris didn't answer his phone either. Um, so after 11, sometime after 11, um, Josh and uh, Justin decided to go back to my apartment to see if they were there and just not answering. Yeah, I believe you mentioned this. What you said is unusual for both of them, Chris and Shannon, to not either call you back or text you back? It was definitely unusual for her not to answer or let me know, like, hey, I'll call you back in a minute or something. Um, 
and it was unusual at that point how many times they had called Chris for him not to pick up either. So tell us about some of the guys that are going back to, to your apartment. They um, left Jamie's um, and drove to my apartment. Um, and I can't remember if they called us or just came back and told us that Shannon's car was gone, but Chris's truck was still there. And they had left a note on his windshield. Now, was that, that information, was that unusual to you at that point? Very. Okay. Um, Chris always drove. When the two of them were together? Yes. So, tell us about what happened after that. Um, they just kind of brushed it off. Like, you know, they're just, they didn't want to come. They're just hanging out. They'll call us later. And so I, I was like, whatever. But at that point, Chris's truck was still there. So I wasn't sure if they were planning to stay at my apartment, which I didn't care. Um, and so I texted him, I was like, just let me know. And um, never said anything. So I decided to go home. You know, about what time did you decide to go home? And it was late, it was like three after three. What was the plan as far as Shannon, where she was going to spend the night? Um, I, there was plenty of room at Jamie's parents' house, um, and if you wanted to stay there, you could have. Um, that was the plan. Um, but then I decided I wanted to go back home, so I did, um, and everyone else stayed. Um, so they were going to, they were supposed to be there with us. And I apologize. I meant the original plan as far as Shannon being with you, or starting out with you, I guess, going to the party. But was there a plan about her staying at your apartment that night or or just possibly at the party? Is that, is that what you're telling Yeah, just wherever. Like if we wanted to go back, we could have. We didn't, hadn't really discussed that at that point, but um, we usually spent the night together. So she was not planning on going back home? No. Saturday. Be one place or the other. Correct. So, uh, what time did you get back? Sunday morning? Um, it was after three. I'm not sure exactly what time, but it was late. What did you notice when you got back to Washington Reed? Chris's truck is still there and Shannon's car is not. <coughs> you recall what the weather was like at that point? I believe it had rained and was drizzling. Um, it wasn't significant enough for me to use an umbrella or a jacket. I just grabbed my stuff and ran up the stairs. But it had rained and was still sort of wet. Um,
And you know where, uh, did you happen to notice where Shannon's uh, forerunner was parked before, or when you left, I guess? Yeah, she, I was, we were parked right directly next to each other. Um, I want to say hers was here, and mine was in this spot right here. Okay. Um, kind of that line that area for so we'll know what area we're talking about. You put an X both as a bar. Or a four on sorry. Okay, okay that's fine. So the truck was still there? The truck was there? Yes. What did you do? I went inside, um, put my stuff down, and got in bed. Now, at that time or earlier that evening or that day, were you aware of, of some of the items that, that Shannon had in her forerunner? Yes. She had a lot of stuff in there. And the closet? She um, had just cleaned out her closet and was taking a massive amount of clothing um, to Goodwill. And had you seen those items uh, in her vehicle? Yes. And what type of container were they in? I think they were just in bags. Um, she had some other stuff in there, but it was, she would just toss them in a bag and they were in the very back of the forerunner. Other than a lot of clothes, how was she about keeping that vehicle clean? She had to. And how did she do that? How did she do that? Um, that was the deal with her parents at the time was if we get you this car, you need to take care of it. And she did. She didn't keep trash in it. It was clean. Um, if some stuff was left in it, it was put in a specific spot so it wasn't you know, drug out all over. Um, if it was messy, she had to clean it. I think you've ridden in that car a number of times. Yes. So what happened then after you went to bed Sunday morning? Um, nothing was unusual. Her bag was gone. Um, I woke up the next morning. She still hadn't called. Um, so I called her phone and went straight to voicemail. Um, I got up and took a shower and um, went back to Jamie's pretty shortly after that. And what did you go to Jamie's for? Um, to see if they were there. Um, everyone was still there. Josh was sitting on the couch when I walked in. Um, hey, have you heard from him? He's like, no. I was like, that's weird. Her phone's going straight to voicemail. Um, and I think it, either him or someone else called and Chris is also at that point was going straight to voicemail. Were you concerned at that point in time? I was, only because it's not like her. Um, but, you know, everyone else was kind of like, they're fine, you know, they're probably just asleep or at home. Um, but at that point, it had been since 10.30 the night before, and I hadn't heard from her. Um, and the only time that we wouldn't talk is if we were in a fight. <laughs> but... You weren't in a fight with it then? No. Uh, what's the next thing you remember had? Um, most of the day had gone by, um, and then I get a phone call from Shannon's mom. Now, at that point in time, had you changed your cell phone number? Yes. And you know how close in time got when all this happened that you made that change? A day or two. I mean, it was fairly new. Um, I, my mom took, took me off her plan um, and so I bought my own phone um, right before that. Yeah, had you provided that number to, to Shannon's mom at, at that yep. point in time? <laughs> but she had your old number, is that yes. correct? At some point, did, though, did you get a phone call from her? Yes. You know about what time that was? I want to say it was early afternoon. It was after four. Um, so, not early afternoon. It was 
mid evening, I suppose. What information did you have about Shannon at that point? I still hadn't heard anything from her um, until she called and told me that she didn't show up to work. Was that unusual when you heard that? Yes. What y'all do that? Um, she was very angry because she'd been trying to call me. Um, she knew when Shannon's boss called and she hadn't shown up that something was wrong. Um, and she wanted to know if I knew where she was, what happened, why is she not answering. Um, and then right then I knew. What happened next? Um, she said that they were um, working on tracking her phone. Um, and I told her that Chris's truck was still in my apartment. Um, her car was gone. Um, that we hadn't, nine o'clock was the last time I talked to her. Um, and you know, she said, why didn't you call me? And I was like, I don't know. It was just kind of one of those, like I knew something wasn't right, but I didn't want to get her in trouble if, you know, she skipped out of work, which was not like her, but I, I didn't know at that point. So, um, and she needed um, Chris, Chris's parents' phone number, I didn't have it. Um, I asked um, Josh if he could give it to me. Um, he was also reluctant because he didn't want to get them in trouble if they were just together somewhere. Um, and he said she didn't show up for work, something is wrong. Um, he eventually gave it to her to call his parents. After uh, parents, I guess, were, were becoming involved, is that correct? Yeah. What, what did y'all organize a group of some kind to do something? Um, Gary called me back and said that um, the phone company finally allowed them to ping where her phone last was and to get my butt back to my apartment. You did that? I did. When you got back, what happened from there? Um, he was there, um, Shannon's brother was there, um, some other other friends were also in the parking lot. Um, Chris's truck was still there. Chris's parents pulled up. Um, and Gary kind of organized who was going in what car, and we were going to go find her. Yeah. Gary being Gary Christian. Yes. Shannon's dad. Yes. Tell us about the, the organized effort to, to look. Um, Chris's parents took his truck home. Um, I got in the truck with Gary um, and all the other kids at the time just got in whatever vehicle was had room um, and we drove to the um, I can't remember if it was the Weigels on Cherry Street um, parked in the parking lot there was a gentleman by the name of Jack Barnes that was there um, Gary talked with him um, and then he told us to go street by street, so we did. Who were you with? I was in the truck with Gary, Shannon's dad. And, uh, how long did that uh, church go on? It felt like forever, but it wasn't. Um, it wasn't long. We had probably been down two streets at that point when um, Chase called and said that he found her car. You know about what time of the night it was that you all were conducting this search? If you no, I mean it was light. Like, was it dark? It yes, was dark. it was dark. And after you got that call from Chase, what did y'all do next? Um, he told what street it was on. Um, Gary and I didn't know where we were because we weren't familiar with that area. Um, we came up on it. Um, and I, we turned left down the street and came up behind her forerunner. And again, what you do monitor to the wall, is that a picture of her vehicle where it was found? Yes. Um, so we had come from behind. So we saw the back of it first when we came down. And we're looking at exhibit number five. Tell us uh, what's significant about that view of that truck. Um, the sticker on the front windshield at the top 
um, her license plate is gone from the front. Um, when we pulled up behind it, I said all of her stickers are gone. Um, they had been removed. Um, once we got out and walked to the front, we noticed that um, they missed one. And which one did they miss? The Texas sticker on the front. Uh, got yes. the laser pointed. Yes. Right there on the windshield. Yes. And just for the record, the picture of Label Exhibit 5 on this board, is that the same picture we're looking at? Correct. Okay. And that's the back um, part of her forerunner. And that's what we saw when we first pulled up down the street. That appears to be exhibit number six, is that correct? Yes. On this picture as well. Anything significant about the back of the forerunner as you found it? Yes, um, her stickers had been removed. Um, and she also had stickers on the smaller windows in the back in the corner. Um, what stickers had been removed from the back? She had a um, power tee and a, um, I think it was an orange North Face sticker, and then two power tees on the sides. On the side windows? Yes. Okay. And all of those had been removed? Yes. Were they there earlier that day? Yes. On that vehicle? Had you seen that? Yes. Exhibit 13. That is the trunk area. Same of, picture as here? Yes. What is significant about that trunk area? It's empty. Is that the way it was when you last saw it? No. Exhibit 8. This is the um, driver's side and passenger's seat in the front of her car. Is that the same as this picture number 8 here? Yes. What's the difference about this picture? Um, well, all of her stuff is gone. Um, I noticed immediately, um, but the thing that stuck out the most was the driver's seat um, was pushed all the way back and leaned as far back as it could go. Is that the way Shannon kept her seat? Nope. Exhibit 9? That is the back seat. Um, that's her jacket laying in the middle and there is mud everywhere in the floorboard. Is that the same picture as exhibit nine here? Yes. So there's mud everywhere? Uh, yeah, down here on the floorboard. Yes. Yeah. Just that one side or was there more mud besides that one location? That's all I could see from where I was standing. Um, I didn't walk around. They told us not to get close to the vehicle. So. Exhibit 11. That's her jacket. Same picture. It's here. Yes. Shannon's jacket, did you say? Yes. Is that where she would keep her jacket in her car? No. Exhibit 110. Um, the there's a bag, um, green with stripes on it, that's laying in the floor. Um, that was her bag. That was the bag she had at my house that night. It was full of her stuff. And is this the same picture that we're looking at with one T? Yes. If, are, are you able to look at this picture and tell us what items in this picture are, are Shannon's? Um, that bag, the green um, striped bag in the floorboard, um, I don't know what any of that other stuff is. It's hard to see. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, right there? that is her bag. Is it a 308? Um, some of this is hers. I, not all of it. Um, there's a bottle of um, lotion and perfume that Chris had just bought her for Christmas. Um, this orange pouch. Um, she carried deodorant in her purse. I don't know if that's her specifically, but I know she always had it. 
Um, and she had Excedrin with her. She got headaches all the time. Um, and I'm not sure what any of the rest of that is. Do you recognize that first? I do not. And is this the same picture you talked about? Yes. We'll move that in. There was a pistol. Just for the record, there's no objections to these being admitted. They're kind of coming in a bits and pieces of What is that? It's a note that I wrote her. It was in her car. That's your handwriting? Yeah. And did you know that note to be in her car? Yes. The last time you saw it? Yes. And again, is that another picture of the forerunner? Yes. With that longhorn sticker on? Yes. And her license plate on the front has been removed. Recognize that? I do. What is it? It's her sweater. Is that what she had on? I do. Um, it was actually mine, but it was um, the tank top she was wearing underneath her sweater. Last time you saw her, was that what she had? Yes. Is it two twelve? Those are her jeans. What she had on that night? Yes. And just for the record, 193, 208. Where there's some uh, other items from that from her forerunner that were missing from it that we, we saw it out there that you recall or pretty much name them all. Um, she had a, she actually had her golf shoes in there um, that were brand new in the box still. Um, all of her clothing that she had in my house that was in the green bag it was not in there. Um, she kept um, some pictures about her um, mirror. Um, her iPod was, I mean, her car was completely cleaned out. Did you know she had an iPod? Yes. Have you, have you seen it? Yeah. Did it have an inscription on it or something? Yeah, her parents had got it for for Christmas, I believe, um, and they had had it engraved. She kept that in the car? Yes. In the forum? Yes. Yeah, did there come a time that uh, you found out that Chris had been killed? Yes, we, um, after we found her car, um, we all went home and waited. Um, the next morning, everyone met in my apartment, um, just Monday morning, and um, I can't remember who got the phone call, but someone got it and said that um, Chris was dead. What did y'all do that? It was sort of chaotic, um, a lot of crying and screaming. Um, Shannon's parents immediately walked back down the stairs, um, and Dina screams out, I'm going to find my child. Um, and then we all kind of get in the car and just go back to that area um, to see if we can find her. Continue the search. Is that an area of town where the Chicken Street area is? Uh, is that an area of town you all frequented? No. Nope. Have you ever been over there? No. And do you know approximately how far that location is from the Washington Ridge Park? About how long it took you to drive over to that area? I took, I think we took the interstate, um, but when we went to search for her vehicle, we cut through some side roads, that, and it's fairly 
close if you cut through um, some of the back roads minutes away. A couple miles, three miles, something like this. And uh, how long did you continue searching? Yeah. We searched the better part of that day. Um, it was freezing outside, so we um, would search and then would go inside to get warm, sit in cars. Um, and then at some point, um, the officer said, y'all have got to just stay put. Um, because we, there were lots of people um, walking down the railroad tracks, going to abandoned buildings and houses and they said, got to stop and let us. Did there come a time that you were made aware of the changes? It wasn't until Tuesday. Cross examination. The apartments that you were staying at, uh, Washington Ridge Apartments, those are over by, I guess it was East Town Mall, Knoxville Central Mall, that general yes. area. So it is on the east side of town. Yes, we moved there because it was close to UT. Gotcha. Certainly not in the area of Cherry Street or, or Chipman Street. No. Would you describe the neighborhood near Cherry Street and Chipman Street as a rough side of town? I'd never been over there. Um, I didn't have a reason to go. Um, By reputation, though. I, I've been told that, um, but like I said, I had no reason to go, so I didn't see it for myself until we got over there looking. Now, you were pretty familiar with Shannon's friends, correct? Who she hung out with, who she associated with. And LaMarcus Davis was not somebody that she would associate with. Absolutely not. And so, of course, there would be no reason that his fingerprints would have been on a, a bank uh, envelope in her car. No. Or on her Blockbuster card. No. And there's no reason why some of her property should have been found at his house. No. Or property being recovered from Daphne Sutton. Daphne Sutton's not somebody that associated with Shannonism. No. I think that's all the questions I have, Your Honor. You step down, thank you. Swear or affirm the evidence you're about to give in the hearing of this cause will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, sir. Please have a seat. Give us your name, please. Josh Anderson. And um, where are you from? Knoxville, Tennessee. Okay. Mr. Anderson, um, what uh, part of town did you grow up in? In Halls. And did you know uh, Mr. Chris Newsom? Yes. What name did you call him by? Just Newsom. And how long did you know how long did you know Newsom? Since sixth grade. Uh, were y'all close friends? Yeah, he's my best friend. When did y'all become best friends? Uh, eighth grade. Uh, we got in a fight and then we became best friends. Did you know uh, Shannon Christian? Yes. And how did you know Shannon Christian? Uh, it was, uh, we were mutual friends and then her and Newsom started dating. Uh, let's see, some more names uh, that we've heard. Uh, Justin Russell? Yes. Who was Justin Russell? A uh, friend of ours uh, that uh, we hung out with. We're good for him. And Jamie Hampton? Yes. Who was Jamie Hampton? Uh, Jamie was another good friend of ours. So, because 
could, if I could direct your attention back to uh, Saturday, January 6, 2007. Do you remember the afternoon? Yes. What were you doing in the afternoon? Uh, we played uh, 36 holes of golf at Knoxville Golf Course that, that morning, afternoon. And who was with you? Uh, me and Nelson did. And um, did y'all have any plans after y'all played golf? Uh, yeah, we were having a uh, party at uh, Jamie Hampton's house. And where was that located? Also in Halls. And so uh, tell us about the, uh, your plans of getting there. How, what was going to happen? What did y'all do? Uh, we uh, left the golf course and then uh, Newsom uh, went home, got a shower, then uh, he dropped me off at my condo, then we met back up in my condo for him to pick me up and take me over to uh, Jamie's house. That way, uh, I only had one car over there. I was meeting my girlfriend at the time over there also. So, uh, yeah, so hit, Newsom came back, picked me up, and then we rode over to Jamie's, and that was probably around seven, yeah, around 7 o'clock, and uh, that was actually the last time that I saw him. So. Now, what, what were his uh, plans that evening? Uh, him and Shannon uh, had made plans to go have dinner. Okay, well, well, what was your understanding uh, of their plans after dinner? Uh, he was going to pick her up, and then they were uh, going to have dinner, and then come straight to the party over at Jamie's house. So what time of approximately were you expecting them to be at the party? Uh, around 10, 10.30, probably no later. So what happens while, while you're at the party? Uh, we're hanging out and then it gets to be uh, later on, uh, like 10.30, 11, and uh, there was no sign of them, so uh, we started contacting both Jamie and Shannon, or not Jamie, but uh, Newsom and Shannon, and uh, wasn't uh, able to get a hold of them. We were leaving them messages, sending them texts, and, and no responses. So what did you do? Well, uh, me and Justin Russell uh, we decided to go out to Washington Ridge Apartments because that's where you know they were going to be meeting up. So uh, we drove out there, and uh, that was probably around midnight. Drove out there, and uh, Newsom's truck was there, but Shannon's car was gone. Is that all? Yes. Uh, because they would they would have been in Newsom's truck any other time. So what did you do? Uh, well, our we had left our golf clubs in the back of the truck, and uh, so I grabbed. It was raining that night, so grab the golf clubs out of the truck, take them with us, and then uh, <coughs> we ended up leaving a note on. Newsom's truck and folded the wind, uh, fold the rear view mirrors in and the uh, just to let him know that somebody had been there. Did you notice anything odd about this truck? Uh, no. No. And so, uh, so if there's nothing to miss about the truck, you take the golf clubs. Mess with the rear view, mess with the mirrors. What did you guys do next? Uh, we ended up going back to uh, Jamie Hampton's house uh, and hung out there for the rest of the night. Did you tell them what you guys had observed in the park? Yes. All right. What happens? Uh, I guess after the park, what do you do? Uh, we go to bed and then wake up that morning and uh, actually me and Carol woke up earlier than everybody else and we were at that point still trying to figure out 
you know, what had happened to them, where they had gone to or whatever. So uh, we were discussing that and then also uh, at that point she uh, tried to call her work that morning to see if she was there. Were y'all ever able to reach Shannon? No. Or Bruce? No. What happens uh, next that, that afternoon? Uh, we had, uh, you know, just kept on wondering where they were and then also uh, had uh, contacted both our parents at that point. And uh, during that time, during that afternoon, uh, there was still no answer, but their phones were still ringing. And uh, the cell phone companies had... Uh, gotten involved at that time and they told us uh, where their phones pinged off of last and it had to be within I think a six or seven mile radius of that cell phone tower uh, which was on Cherry Street and also their phones both of them ended up being cut off around the same time which was about 530. Now uh, once you found out about the cell phone ping did you go someplace? Uh, yes. Uh, Newsom's dad, Hugh, he uh, called me and asked me to bring Newsom's truck back to the house. So uh, went uh, back out to Washington Ridge Apartments, brought Newsom's truck back to the house. Where did you go after that? Uh, at that point, uh, we ended up, uh, we, met, we went back to Washington Ridge Apartments uh, for a little bit and then we uh, figured out uh, the cell phone situation and uh, Gary, I believe, knew, uh, knew a retired detective that uh, we met down on Cherry Street. So we ended up uh, I drove, Justin Russell drove, uh, her brother uh, her brother Chase and Gary, we were all uh, four vehicles and he told us to start looking in this area that uh, it would be the best place to start looking. So we kind of started a grid search, going down four streets at a time and uh, it was actually the second set of streets that we found her vehicle. What, if anything, did you do when you found her vehicle? Uh, that's whenever uh, we contacted the police. What, if anything, did you notice about her vehicle? That the uh, stickers have been ripped off. Uh, there was a power T and a couple other stickers in the back windshield. What did you do after that? Uh, we waited. Uh, at that point, we were concerned. Uh, and so we waited around, and then the uh, uh, mobile crime unit come out, and uh, they opened up the vehicle. And uh, whenever they opened up the vehicle, we saw uh, <coughs> muddy footprints in the back. The seats were... Uh, scooted way back and there was a crushed up pack of Newport cigarettes and a ripped up cell phone charger. Had you uh, ever known of Shannon or Chris to smoke Newports? No. Um, Alright, what did you do after that? Uh, well, we actually uh, tried to ask a few of the neighbors to see if they had seen anything uh, and don't want to say anything. So uh, we went to bed that uh, that night, try and get a little bit of sleep, and uh, got up that morning. So now we're into Monday morning. Yeah. What happens Monday? Uh, Monday we get up and
we uh, We hear of uh, a body found by the railroad tracks, uh, but at that point didn't know, uh, wouldn't have thought it would have been Newsom at that point. Why not? Uh, just, you just wouldn't have thought that it would have been him. Are, were you familiar with that location? Yes. Had you ever been there with Lucy? No. Um, all right. What happens after that? Uh, we uh, end up uh, kind of a waiting game. Uh, we ended up going back to Washington Ridge Apartments, uh, a Kara's apartment, and. Uh, meet the detectives over there and they were questioning everyone we were tr uh, trying to figure out you know what was going on and uh, I believe it was a little after one whenever uh, Newsom's brother called and uh, uh, Dennis he called and said that the dental records come back and it was uh, Newsom by the railroad tracks. Uh, at that point, you know, everyone's upset. Uh, we go back to Jamie's house for a little bit. And uh, kind of regroup because, you know, we knew that there was still, there's a possibility that Shannon could still be alive. So, kind of put that to the side and uh, try and focus on Shannon finding her. Where do y'all meet up at? Uh, we met up uh, at a restaurant right on Cherry Street. Uh, and you know, basically everybody just starts knocking on doors and, you know, just looking in every nook and cranny around the area that the car was found. Is it still Monday? Uh, yeah, yeah. What happens, uh, I guess, maybe Tuesday? Same thing. We're still looking. Uh, around down uh, in that area where we found our vehicle and this one. Uh, you become aware, you learned that Shannon was actually found there. Yeah, uh, I believe it was Tuesday around noon that uh, whenever they were bringing <coughs> Shannon out. Now, sir, so are you aware of, let me show you a couple pictures here. Yeah. Just put you in. Exhibit one, you recognize exhibit one? Yes, that is uh, Washington Ridge Apartments. Exhibit three? That is Kara's uh, apartment. Yeah, up those step, up those steps, and then over and up those uh, the second set of steps right there. Exhibit two. Same thing. If in exhibit two, do you see where Newsom's uh, truck was? Yeah, Newsom's truck would have been uh, to the left of those steps, looking at this picture. Yeah. And then, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, well, I was going to say Shannon usually parked over close to that tree. Oh, in yeah. this area? Yeah. What about Exhibit 4? 
That is uh, Shannon's pool room. The location saw it? Yeah. That's the back of her forerunner. Now, what do you notice about the back of the forerunner? There's no decals on the back windshield. And there would have been. There would have been? Yes. Is it 13? That is the back of her forerunner, which had uh, a bunch of clothes in the back. And, you know, you can see there there's not. Is it 8? Front seats, and you could tell they're scooted back also. Is it a seven? It's part of the decal that's been ripped off. Right there? Yeah. Is it a nine? There's the muddy footprints that I was speaking of. Is it a ten? Same thing. Is it an eleven? Uh, jacket. Is it what? That's the ripped up cell phone charger. For the record, thank you. For the record, if we can move into evidence exhibit one through thirteen. Any objection? No. <laughs> that can be received. Now, are you familiar with um, some of Mr. Um, Newsom's clothing? Yes. Uh, also, did uh, Mr. Newsom did he uh, dip uh, Copenhagen? Yes. Where did uh, Mr. Newsom work? Uh, he worked for B and F Construction as a carpenter. What is BNF construction? Uh, a couple of guys we were uh, actually friends with. We uh, we worked with them uh, doing trim carpentry. Was he, uh, Mr. Newsom? Was he also a fan of the balls? Yeah, big fan. And did Mr. Newsom did he like wearing ball caps? Yes. If you were to see. Um, Two ball caps, would you be able to identify whether or not uh, these ball caps are Mr. Newsom's? Yes. Let me show you exhibit 345. Exhibit 345. Do you recognize Exhibit 345? Yeah, that is one of Newsom's hats. BNF construction. If we can move, move Exhibit 345 in his evidence. Any no objection, Show you exhibit 344. And ask you to recognize exhibit 344. That's also one of those slides. We can move exhibit 344 in his What we're looking for is 
saw him pull this out. Can you tell the jury about uh, Mr. Newsom's footwear? Uh, he had a poor taste in footwear. <laughs> they weren't the most attractive shoes that he had wore. Uh, this shoe here? Yeah. And what do you recognize this shoe to be? Uh, that's Newsom's tennis shoe. Was he wearing these that night? Yes. Yes, he was. in his evidence is collective. Morning. Now those shoes that uh, General Fitzgerald just showed you, um, those are a fairly small shoe. Chris's foot was small, was it not? Yeah, I believe uh, there's some more a nine and a half. Like a nine and a half. So for a guy his size, that was yeah, usually small, small foot. foot. Yeah. And uh, you had been with Chris earlier that day. Y'all were playing golf, I believe. Yeah, we got an early start uh, around, I think we started around nine o'clock. Nine o'clock in the morning? Yeah. Okay. We got 36 holes in, so. Okay, so you got a full 36 holes in. Yeah. Okay. And. The plan was that y'all were going to a party over at whose house? Jamie Hampton's. Okay. And was that a birthday party or something like that? Yeah. And about how many people were at the party? Uh, around 20 to 25, okay. something like that. And were there 20 to 25, um, I guess later that evening you went over to, to Chris's house whenever he didn't show up at the party, right? Uh, oh, not, I'm sorry, the apartments. Yes. Yes, okay. And uh, Chris's truck was still parked there, correct? Yes. And what was the weather like? 
It was raining. It was actually, it was coming down pretty hard. And uh, the clubs that y'all had used to go play, were they still in the truck? They were in the bed of the truck. Okay. Did you get those? Yeah. No further questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll break for lunch now. Uh, the lunches are here. Let me caution you again, it's easy to forget. This is not time for you to discuss the case at all among yourselves or with anyone else. So please just put the case out of your mind. Enjoy your lunch. We'll start back about 1 o'clock. You can leave your notebooks on the chair. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor.